Now today we're looking at an intake valve control solenoid. This just simply controls the lift of the intake valves. In other words, a low lift or a high lift. Really made up of two components. There's just a solenoid right here. And this just monitors the oil temperature. And that's it. Now fortunately, if this is your problem, the trouble codes we're doing today is for the passenger side. Quite easy to get to. We'll jump over to the car in a moment. If uh, you have trouble with the uh, driver's side, which I will do probably tomorrow, it's a lot more work to replace. Uh, but I will get to that right after this video. That being said, this works with this guy. This is an oil pressure switch. This is just used for diagnosis, okay? So if you have a trouble code, it's for this guy right here. So let's jump over to the vehicle. So where is this valve located? Well, this is the driver's side location. Again, this is a lot more work. I'll show you on how you can get that done tomorrow or within a few days. But that being said, take a look on the passenger side. And right here is precisely where it's located. Now it's held on just by four 10 millimeter fasteners. And to test it first, you can do two things really. You can remove the air chamber. And if you need to do that, I'll include a link uh, to another video that I did in the past showing on how you can remove this. It's quite simple. I think we'll be able to test it with this in the way. So I'm just going right here at the six o'clock position. There's a tab, press on the tab, pull up. And now I just want to verify that power is getting to this harness connector. Because if power is not getting here, then this cannot work correctly, the, the solenoid itself. So let me just grab a multimeter. Now to verify that power is getting to that harness connector, you need a digital multimeter or even an analog one. These are inexpensive. Do not be intimidated by these if you've never used one before. If you do happen to need one, I'll have a couple of links in the description box below to our Amazon affiliate site. But ultimately, this will measure if we're getting voltage. So, digital multimeter, and then I just have an alligator, a wire with two alligator clips. So let's hook this up. Now the alligator clip just makes it easy, it's not necessary, but it just makes it easy to uh, do this test. So on the left prong, I have the alligator just clipped on there, okay, there's a little metal prong inside there, just attached to that. And then I'm just taking the red lead from the multimeter, taking the other end of the alligator clip, and that just creates a connection. Now let's turn on the ignition key. So you're not going to start the vehicle, just turn the key to the on position. Okay, now with the multimeter, you want the volts DC setting, and with the black wire, touch any good ground. In other words, that's a metal point on the body. A good reading is 10 volts. That's if your battery is good. In my case, this is not this car is not ran in maybe two weeks, so the battery is a little low but we have 6.3 volts and that's fine. That verifies that power is getting to that harness connector. Now, if you do this test and you do not see a reading here, then you have a break somewhere in the wiring. Now again, if you do that test and you do not see a reading, check the connection right here in the back. Sometimes it will fray right here, especially if the car has just been sitting for a long time and you have mice and so forth eating away at things. But if everything looks okay, then we can test the solenoid itself. Now, I'll test it on the bench, just so you have a better view of what's going on, but you can do this test while everything is still installed on the vehicle. Now, testing this solenoid is very, very simple. Again, you can test this solenoid while it's still attached to the vehicle. Now, when you do this, don't get confused between these two harness connectors. The gray one, this is monitoring the temperature of the oil. You're not dealing with that. You want the larger valve. And take a look inside this solenoid, or really this plastic harness connector. And you see two prongs. All that you're doing, and if you did notice, I, I did have to. Let me show you very quickly if you got confused. I was using the Craftsman, but the battery's getting a little low, so I just have this as a backup. But all that you're doing is you're taking the two leads from the multimeter and just touching these two prongs. That's all that you're doing. The black can touch the left lead or the right lead, vice versa. It doesn't make a difference. You're just taking these two leads and touching those prongs. So we're going to do an ohms or a resistance test. And that's the omega symbol on the multimeter. Okay. Then again, I have my alligator clips. 
just makes the job easy. One will place on the right prong. Oops, this will go on the left. Okay, and then a good reading is 6 to 12 ohms. That's what you want to see. And that's a good valve. If you don't see a reading here, or it's in incredibly high, then the valve is bad, or the solenoid is bad. So we have 10 ohms, roughly. So this is in good shape. It works perfectly, perfectly fine. So if you do this test, you don't see a reading, or it's just off the charts. Again, 6 to 12 is what Subaru uh, recommends you should see then you need to replace the solenoid. It's quite simple, let me show you how. Now if you are doing this replacement, I do recommend that you just remove this plastic chamber. Again, it makes the job a lot easier, and I'll have a link in the description box below to a separate video. But if you want to leave it in, you have four fasteners, one, two, three, four, and this whole thing comes out. Let me show you a different view. Now if you've been following along over the last few weeks, you know that we're replacing the head gasket on a 2010 Subaru, so this is pretty much ready to rock and roll. It's the entire engine, but it's the exact same solenoid. So just so you can get a better view of what you need to do, again, you have four 10 millimeter fasteners. They're not very tight. You just, just break them loose. Okay, once you break those fasteners loose, this comes right off, whoop, and the gasket just fell off. And when it comes time to replacing the solenoid, you can check your local dealer. If you're looking to save some money, eBay typically has something like this used. Just make sure it has a warranty. That's my recommendation. If you're going used, use a new gasket, and when you reapply or reinstall these fasteners, don't over torque them because they can snap on you. Okay, they're not very strong. Use something like I use a 3 inch drive, but use a quarter inch drive, something a little bit smaller so you, you can't over torque them. And plug everything back up, you'll be in good shape.